Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com coming at you with that right there, Little Hoops Premium Stock, a 20 box blaster case from jazbeescasebreaks.com. No vet common ship and you got a chance at the Pelicans if you bought at least two teams. So let's sort by column A and let's see, Dario got two teams, that's an entry. EA got two teams, that's an entry. Harrison, you got two teams, that's an entry. Jay got three, but two count for the purpose of the promo, that's an entry. Jeremy Port got 10 teams. That's five entries. Logan got two teams. That's an entry. Nate, two teams, one entry. Sherry, two teams, one entry. And Tyler, two teams, one entry. So that's a total of 13 entries here. Let's put, in, put your names into this list. And the name on top after six and two, eight times. We'll get the Pelicans for this break. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, and final nine. After eight, there you go. Jeremy Port definitely had the odds, and he gets the Pelicans for this particular break. We'll put a little rooftop next to your name so you know where you won that. Let's delete this column right here. Let's get this back, alphabetized by team name. No, I do not want to merge cells. I just want to put boxes. All right, good luck, everybody. Enough supplies for this, I think I do. All right, so there it is. There's the premium stock blaster case. here but if you look at the top camera you can see all the boxes there's 5 10 and then 15 20 right up here so I'm going to open up a handful of these at a time Do I have that official printout here yes so here's how it all shakes out, boys and girls. Thanks, everyone, for getting into it. These over a little this way. Give myself a little room for this. What? Look at full crystal blasting away dust, pollen, dirt, and grime. Yeah, look look at that dope on a ladder with a with a with a spray bottle. No, look at this. That person's on the ground just blasting water 27 feet into the air. My windows disappear. May have issues with birds I'm trying to fly through it. Double it? I mean, I may have to stop the break and go to this break brought to you by www.buyfullcrystal.com. All sorts of things would be clean.
Folks, we finally have. It's been a little quiet on, in terms of live sports recently. Basketball being gone for, for that All Star weekend. But we, tomorrow we got Wizards at Grizzlies tomorrow. And then the uh, NBA Network game is going to be Spurs at Mavs. So just two games tomorrow, and then a huge slate of games for the TNT night Thursday night, which should be a lot of fun. Looking forward to that. Oh, no. What is Myers Leonard apologizing for using an anti-Semitic slur. Come on, dude. Yikes. When was this? A video that surfaced to you on social media. But what was the context? During a recent video game live stream? Oh, he was playing on a video game. Harrison playing a video game. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't. You know? It's just, you're, you're a pro. Who was the other? Was it Will Myers? Was it a ba another baseball player who I think was playing like a video game and he had he didn't say anything like, like racist or anything like that. Uh, but I think he was talking about how much he doesn't like his coach or something like that. Don't do that. You're on a live stream. People are looking for anything that they could like record and then like, you know, break news. Be, be first to, to uncover your, uncover what you said. Look what happened to Kyle Larson, the NASCAR driver. I mean, the word that Myers Leonard said is, is it's right up there. Yeah, when you're in the spotlight, people look to tear you down. Sorry, right, Harrison. You gotta be, you gotta be smarter than that when you're on a live stream. I mean, who's he playing against? He's probably playing against like kids anyway, right? <laughs> like teenagers. It's like you're a grown man and a professional basketball player. Come on, man. That makes some Galloway number. No, it's not, but it ships. Do all cards ship in this? No, no vet comments chip. All right, so let's take a quick look. So stuff like this, Jared Allen, Lonzo Ball, not going to ship. Nasir Little, yes, will ship, rookie card. Draymond Green, yes, because that's a refractor. That will ship. Dar Daniel House Jr., no. Rudy Gay, no. Dean Wade, yes. Alfonso McKinney, yes, because it's a red parallel. Those will ship. Jay Crowder will not ship. And Fred Van Vliet, yes, that's a mojo refractor. Inserts, yes, of course they should. They're inserts. Zero gravity will ship. I think the only exception is uh, to the no vet common rule. That's a standing order here at Jaspies. Is uh, is LeBron commons ship? Second year Luka Doncic commons ship. And um, I don't know if Kobe's on this checklist, but he would ship if he was. There's a Zion, Silver Deer, and Fox. Zion will go to the Pelicans. That was won by Jeremy Port. That's a start, Jeremy. We got next insert, Zion. 
There's Montrez, Clippers edition. Hachimura. That's was I was trying to forget. It was like, I was like, I was like, there's one more player. Rex is right. Giannis as well is also on the on the vet commons that do ship list. Usually I try to usually I try to catch it as we as we go through the break, so the shipping team doesn't have to worry about it. But if we forget it, they they know to keep an eye out for that too. Thanks, Rex. And we got a Hachimura. Doesn't look any different from the other ones, but it's flipped around. Maybe there is a redemption. There is Chris Paul. That guy's important. John Morant. Silver Kuzma. Speaking of Giannis, everyone see that All Star game? Giannis went like 16 for 16 from the field. Right. Not all of them are dunks either, but 16 from 16 from the field. And the most impressive thing, three for three from three. See, that that's terrifying. If, if Giannis starts to... Uh, if Giannis starts to develop that outside shot, I, I think he was interviewed by it after the game. There he is right there speaking of Giannis. I think he was interviewed after the game and regarding his outside shooting, which has not been very good, you know, relative to what the modern NBA needs. But he doesn't have to yet, but if he starts developing that, oh my God. And he was saying in that interview, he thinks he wants to, I think he kind of said he wanted to play more loose. He wanted to play fun. Not be afraid of taking that outside shot. You know, not, you know, which I think could be a, a, a terrifying attitude. Good for the Bucks, bad for the rest of the league. Guy, is the Mahomes the only NFL comment that ships? Yes, him and and Tom Brady are the are the NFL comments that ship in a no vet common ship break. But a lot of times we ship vet commons these days. I think when when this uh, premium stock first came out, I think like the first week or two, um, we we would ship all cards. So it's only until a product has been out for a while where we start to lean more, lean more no vet commons. see what else, what else is happening leading back into the second half of the season does Blake Griffin going to the Brooklyn Nets do anything for move the needle for anybody not sure if it does what is he but hey good for Blake though he's on a team that's most likely going to go very deep into the playoffs he doesn't have that, that doesn't got that he doesn't have that bounce anymore that he used to have, but you know he might get a lot of opportunities where they're in the lead, right? Where he can be part of the second unit, he can kind of work on a work on a jump shot on the fly. We'll see what he can do. Drive to the basket, I'm still sure he can do that. There's very little pressure for him on that team. I mean, I'd be, if you're Blake Griffin, you're happy if you get like 15 minutes a night. I'm going to go deep into the playoffs. Maybe, maybe get a ring out of it. I'm Blake. I'm happy about that. Towards the end of your career. Has been decimated by injuries.
Yeah, I guess I guess it's a before the before we start the second half of the season. Harrison's right. We got a for real, not for real conversation. Are the Jazz for real? Harrison's asking. So going into the first half, they're twenty-seven and nine. I mean, if they're healthy, why not? That's a terrifying team, right? If they're healthy. Nice one, DJ. Depends on if you like the saxophone. You can play jazz, a lot of other instruments too. Depending on what kind of jazz you like. Like Donovan Mitchell's for real. <laughs> Mike Conley is strong. They got Bojan Bogdanovic, Joe Ingles, yeah, like Royce O'Neal in that small forward spot that's been pretty effective. Right? Uh, Royce O'Neal can play power forward too. And then they got Ilya Sova and all those guys can switch around in those three, four spots. And Gobert is strong. And Jordan Clarkson looks like he could be like six man of the year. So only only health can really stop them. I think Jordan Clarkson is a pretty interesting part of that team. If you got to count on Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert being like the two superstars. Mike Conley's a strong veteran. So is Jordan Clarkson. Ah, you're a, you're in Harrison's and Nuggets guys. So hey, Nuggets are looking good too. I think let's go to the Nuggets depth chart. Well, first of all. Let's see. Nuggets are 21 and 15. They're only six games behind in the in the number one seed. They're definitely going to be a playoff team. Let's take a look at their. I want to see a little more. Maybe this is maybe this is a misinformed statement, but I do. Do we want to see a little more consistency from Jamal Murray? Gobert right there. But Nikola Jokic, yeah, Murray slipping a little this year, right? I think that we need it. You know, if you're a Denver Nuggets fan, you need you need him to really be more consistent and just really just turn it up and turn it on. That's That's crucial for that team's postseason success. DJ's thinking playoff Murray will show up. Because otherwise, that's a solid team. And you know what? You want you want Michael Porter Jr. really to start. I love THT right here, Sherry. There he is, Town Horn Tucker. I don't know why he's getting sleeved and top loaded alongside uh alongside Zion, but that's my Lakers bias. But this guy's guy's a beast I mean Nikola Jokic can can literally take over games and you just need Jamal Murray and 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 Will Barton and Gary Harris and Michael Porter Jr. to just be solid and consistent and they've got enough depth there that can that can scare a lot of teams He did. He did. Uh, he did kill in the bubble, but I wonder if that's because because there's no fans there. Sometimes the no fans help. See, we we need more out of Jamal Murray. You know, and I I think Jamal Murray will. There's LeBron right there. Well, Murray's only 24, right? He's been in the league since six, 2016, right? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so this is his fifth full season in the league. So now if you look at a lot of players, like look at Kevin Durant and look at his career. There's Alfonso McKinney, 99 for Cleveland, EA. 
But you look at Kevin Durant, and there's no doubt that his talent, the talent was there, but he did not really, like, kind of peak until, he, until like, the fifth, sixth, seventh season in the league where... Where he, where it all kind of clicked together. Nice Zion right there. Where not the scoring was there, but then the defense was there. The understanding of the game came. You know, all the maturity came. Blah 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 blah. And so a lot of for a lot of players, especially since they start so young, that I think that. But Jamal or Murray's in that sort of window where like, is he going to take it to the next level or not? You know. Dante saying Embiid, Joel Embiid for MVP. I think he, if he keeps it up and and stays healthy and plays plays more uh, the majority of the games, I think he is. I think he is going to be it, be the MVP. Um, I mean, I. <laughs> who do you who do you pick? You almost have to lean Jokic just because he can demonstrate that he's healthier and he can give you a full season of games but when Embiid is on like I don't know how you stop that guy <laughs> uh, no Luca this isn't the place for you to test your material thanks though Yeah, Jokic is really carrying that team. I saw that one, there's this, there this one 50-point game that he had where he was just, he was just, just taking over. Well, speaking of MB, do the. Do the Sixers get over the hump? I mean, so the Sixers are the number one seed. 24-12 and 12 is their record. The Brooklyn just half a game behind them. No doubt the Sixers will make it to the playoffs, but do they, do they have enough? No, I agree. Yeah, Jokic definitely sees the floor better than Embiid. I don't know. MVP voting's a little weird. I feel like I feel like that's going to go with more of a. I think Harrison mentioned this earlier. Maybe go with a little bit of a more popular East Coast bias team. I mean, I'm not saying Embiid. I mean, we're splitting hairs here, Dante, between Embiid and Jokic. Both are pretty incredible. I'm saying that that Jokic should probably get a little more love for the MVP award than he's probably currently getting. We're not disputing Embiid's credentials, though. But yeah, DJ's mentioning the point about health. Can't tell you what the Nuggets are without Jokic because he plays every game. But 
But yeah, I don't know. Yeah, does Embiid need to see the floor more on that team because of Simmons? I think Simmons has played pretty well. I have a friend in Philadelphia who says who says that he sees what he sees Ben Simmons, you know what I mean? But apparently a lot of fans just don't see Ben Simmons for what he is and could could how important he is to that team. Really, if he's healthy. Everyone just thinks where's the, you know, they they want Steph Curry on that team. You know. They want Steph, not Ben Simmons. But I don't know. I think Doc Rivers is a pretty solid coach. I like Shake Milton. Shake can I mean, why do you need Ben Simmons to shoot threes? Shake, Shake Milton can shoot threes. Matisse Tybel can shoot threes. I saw I saw Furkan Kormaz, Korkmaz in a game. I think the game when they were resting a lot of the guys in the game before the uh, the All-Star break. I was thinking threes left and right. And the flexibility that you can get with Ben Simmons, so you can, you can probably play him one through five, I think. Here are the next five boxes, and the last five are right over there. We're almost done, folks. Five more box in this trash can that's getting really full. Nice Lugan Dort silver for OKC. That's for Jeremy. We got next Zion Williamson insert. Not sure what my, what my Lakers are going to do. I think they don't have anything to trade for anybody. So I think they just have to count on some sort of buyout market, whatever emerges from the buyout market. But you really got to see if. Oh, Charles Barkley flipped around. I don't know why that was flipped around. Maybe a short print. But the Lakers could use a bit of size to help uh, to help Anthony Davis not have to play the center role as much. Andre Drummond, maybe. Andre Drummond, I think they said that he'd have to get. So there's something weird. He'd have Cleveland would have to trade him, and then there would have to be the buyout. So you might not find too many willing trading partners to do that. You need three point shooting. They started off the first month or so of the season. I feel like they were. They were shooting the three ball so much better, and I was like, all right. And then they still play pretty solid defense all around, but that the three-point shooting has just slipped significantly for the Lakers. They really need a, a little bit of that. KCP could go five for five from three one night, and then 0 for seven, one for seven from the field the very next night. So he's a little inconsistent. I mean, maybe they're just, I don't know. it's harder to just turn it on, I think, in, in the playoffs this year. I feel like it's going to be a lot more difficult this year. Not for all teams. For any, any top team. Can't just switch it on this year with fans potentially back in the stands by, by the time the playoffs roll around, at least for some states.
But no, yeah, you cannot can't cannot play off LeBron. The playoff LeBron definitely needs a healthy Anthony Davis. Which I hope will happen. I think we'll start to see in the next week or so we'll see what an update on Anthony Davis's calf situation. Next five boxes. Were we wrong? Here's another question. Were we wrong about the Brooklyn Nets? Were, were, I, 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 think, I think for now I could say that I was wrong. I think so many people were like, were like oh, that team's not going to work. Now are you going to share the ball with James Harden and Kyrie and KD on that team? You know, but I think, I think they quickly adapted. I think they're like, they haven't played with KD a lot, but I think they've quickly adapted. I think Kyrie was like, yeah, James Harden's our point guard. And James Harden's like, yeah, I'm going to get a ton of assists every night. That's going to be my job, you know, and still be dangerous from the three. But he's going to facilitate, run the floor a lot more, which I think he probably does, basketball IQ-wise, probably does run the floor probably better than Kyrie maybe. Maybe Kyrie's better off the ball. And now if those two can play together well when KD's consistently back in the lineup, and if that team doesn't, you know, if that team doesn't melt down in the playoffs, I can't imagine Steve Nash and Mike D'Antoni coach team they're respected dudes. It's not like, you know, they're respected dudes. But that team looks terrifying. You know, when that when that Brooklyn Nets team is on. And if they kind of play, they've got a little bit of depth issue. Maybe that's why they needed Blake Griffin just to gobble up some minutes. I right, do, do have Landry Shamit, Joe Harris, Bruce Brown's out there. Those guys will need to play, play at least solid, decently in the playoffs. And that team can, if that team can kind of get together. Yeah, Harrison, you were wrong about them. If, that, if the Nets could get together and play just a little bit of team defense when it counts, it's a dangerous playoff team. Who wants to see those guys in the playoffs? No one does. Especially for seven games, they're going to wear you out. And DeAndre Jordan is a, is a decent rim protector still, I guess. It's a big body out there. So you can still alter some shots. Yeah, doesn't it, Dante? Dante's like, feel like they can drop a 150 on you whenever they want. Right. James Harden, 40 points. Kyrie. You know, James Harden could score 30 points. Kyrie could score 40 points. KD could have another 40 points. And everyone, and everyone else fills in points here and there, and boom, all of a sudden... <laughs> It's like 150, 150 points. So that's, a, that's a scary team. Let's see. Seven game series though. Let's see. You know, smart coaching. Coaching is going to be the thing, right? You can find a coach that could that could scheme against these guys. They get a little too predictable. Yeah, I think Nets GM did do a good job. And I kind of like, I think people kind of forget, like, I really like uh, Mike D'Antoni being a bench coach there. Pretty much, I'm pretty sure that Mike D'Antoni is, is basically coaching the team. You know what I mean? He's, he's probably calling plays, running practice, you know, drawing up plays, developing schemes, and, and then and then all uh, all Nash has to do is just talk to the media, 
deal with the front office, talk to the players, you know, and that's it. And Dan Tony doesn't have this, doesn't have the stress of, you know, he's an older guy. He doesn't have the, he can kick back a little bit, right? He has the luxury of just kicking back and just being a basketball guy and not having, not having to deal with like team politics and locker room politics and just be like, here's my brilliant offensive coaching ideas. Go, <laughs> go forth and score 150. All right, last five boxes. There's a John Morant. There's another John Morant. Yeah, let's finish strong here. Now, we still have second half of the season, folks. We still have that and a long playoff run to go. Think, are we thinking there's going to be any surprises? Jay Goins, by the way, with the Grizzlies getting all these John Morants. Some surprises? Knicks? Could they could they win a playoff series? No, I don't think they could win a playoff series. Could they? Is anyone gonna surprise? Are we underrating the Hornets? Or uh, are, I'm sorry, the Raptors? Hornets, I think, still need another year or two to develop, but they look like they're ahead of schedule. But it can't be all chalk, right? In the playoffs or the rest of the season? I thought that Langford might be numbered, but it's not. There's got to be an upset somewhere. Who gets bounced early? You know, we need Giannis in the finals. That's hashtag good for the hobby. Right. Phoenix is a good story. They're in second place, 24 and 11. They're ahead of the Lakers and the Clippers. Phoenix has been an excellent story. Could they be a surprise team? I mean, they're on the right half of the... Uh, they're on the right half of that Western Conference bracket. They'd be playing a lower-seeded team if they could stay in the top eight or top four, which they might be able to. This guy has been beasting out. You know, like, take a look at that team. Austin Rivers to 99. Look at the Phoenix depth chart here. I think they're pretty. I think they're pretty scary. Right, Chris Paul's running that team. Devin Booker doesn't have to worry about it. Chris Paul runs that offense. Devin Booker just runs around off the ball, shoots. You know, Michael Bridges, Frank Kaminsky, Jay Crowder was a good pickup. You know, and DeAndre Ayton is a, is a really nice big man I'm playing a lot of great basketball. Like, for like daily fantasy players, check out DeAndre Ayton's numbers, and he's just logging in solid minutes after solid minutes. Just such a consistent chunk of points every time you play him. You know? And he, remember, he's a number one overall pick, and I'd argue that his cards on a secondary market, his rookie cards, might actually be under might be undervalued, I want to say. I mean, maybe they're creeping back up. I haven't really been paying that close attention to his stuff, but my guess is that there's got to be, he's got to be a little underrated, cards-wise. And all it takes is like, you know, and there's also so many good big men in the game right now. Anthony Davis, Jokic, Embiid, you know. But all it takes is DeAndre Ayton to have a few signature games here and there, you know, and I feel like his his stuff could really skyrocket back to what it should be for a number one overall pick. Lonnie, well, think Mavs upset the Suns? I think the Suns could be the surprise that up that upsets that move like maybe wins their first series in God knows how long. 
with another LeBron for the Lakers. That'll be for Sherry. There's Joel Embiid. He's playing great basketball. MVP level basketball. Zubac. De'Aaron Fox. Dame time. You see that three pointer he took to win the. Uh, to win the All-Star Game. Also, before I close this break, I really think that the Elam ending that you see at the end of the All-Star Game should be for all regular season overtimes. What a fun way to end that game. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. Thanks for watching. Thanks for breaking with us. And I'll see you next time for the next one. Bye-bye.